Hello and welcome back to Some Kind of Gaming. I'm Laura, this is Tom, and we are pissed off. What? I hear you asking? Well, let me tell you. We would very much like to be able to play Kingdom of Hearts on our Nintendo Switches, but we can't. It's just impossible for us. And this is a side to Nintendo's cloud gaming service that we just don't hear many people talking about. And trust us when we say that it, it sucks. Essentially the way that cloud gaming works is you don't actually have a copy of the game. You're paying to rent some server space where the game is being run and to have that streamed to your Switch. It's kind of like Netflix, how you don't actually own the file of Squid Games, but you're streaming it from their servers. It's an unfortunate consequence of this, that if you don't have any native servers in your home country, or at least close by, then the games are just inaccessible to you. And that is unfortunately the case when you come from a land down under like us. Australia's internet infrastructure, for lack of a better way of describing it, sucks. We're rated pretty low on the global rankings for internet speed, and we've only been slipping further down those rankings in recent years. There is an argument to be made that even if Nintendo were to bring some servers over here, they would still be inaccessible to a large percentage of people. We have Australia's lack of internet infrastructure and speed, as well as our widespread population to thank for this. We're just spread too thin. However, this is not a valid excuse for other more densely populated areas that also are left without servers and a way to play any of these cloud games, like the whole of South America, for example. Now, there is a cheeky little workaround that may be implemented depending on where you live in the world. If you create a US Nintendo account, then you will have access to all the cloud games that they have access to over there. However, your ability to actually play said games still very much depends on your proximity to their servers. We have heard some reports of people from Mexico being able to play the Switch versions of Hitman and Control, for example. But because the servers are still pretty far away, it is definitely not the best way to experience these games. On the other hand, down here in Australia, we are so far away from any existing servers that this simply doesn't work. The lovely people over at Vux tried it for themselves and some of the games simply wouldn't even start. So it is definitely not a viable option for us Australians. Even if you are lucky enough to live in a country where there is a Nintendo cloud server, there's still no guarantee that it's actually going to run smoothly for you. Servers have limits and you will have to wait to even play the game that you paid for. Recently, Final Fantasy XIV had to shut down due to overwhelming popularity, as players were waiting upwards of six hours to simply log into the game. Now, we do know that this is quite an extreme example, but when Kingdom of Hearts does launch in the States, be prepared to wait in a queue. If you are 900th in said queue, that means you've got to wait for 900 other people to stop playing the game before you can start playing it. It's not ideal. Most of us gamers only have a few hours here and there to relax and get our minds off the real world. So I think I speak for all of us when I say that we don't want to waste some of that time in a queue. The other issue is that even if you are near a server, even if you have finally been able to log on after waiting in a queue, you have to have a solid, stable and fast internet connection to run these games. As we mentioned, many places here in Australia including where we live now, don't have this. So even if Nintendo was to bring the service out here, we would probably still be left scratching our heads. The Switch's main draw card is that it's a hybrid system, a handheld and a home console. The idea of cloud gaming just restricts this concept and forces you to keep your Switch confined in your home. No public Wi-Fi is going to be able to meet the demands of these services, and most parks and buses don't even have Wi-Fi. Ruddy parks. <laughs> the Switch was meant to be set free. Keeping it caged up in its dock like some sort of criminal just doesn't seem right to us. In fact, actually, most of the current docks in circulation won't even cut it for a service like this. In order to create the most stable internet connection you can, you're more than likely going to want to run a cable. 
something that the old Switch docks just don't support. It wasn't until the recent OLED revision that Nintendo finally decided to add an Ethernet port to their docking system. You can get a USB to Ethernet adapter, but that is just one more piece of hardware that you need to play a game that you don't even own. Honestly, what are they people thinking? I don't know that. Cloud gaming for the Nintendo Switch seems like an interesting, somewhat controversial choice. But it also seems like an interesting choice for Square Enix, the studio behind Kingdom Hearts. Now we do understand that the reason they chose to bring these classic games to the cloud is because of the technical limitations of the Switch. It would cost too much money and take too much time to shove any of these games onto one of Nintendo's cartridges. However, we can't help but feel they're losing potentially millions of sales by making these games just inaccessible for many people, us included. We do understand that there would undoubtedly be issues trying to convert these games into something playable on the Switch, but surely it wouldn't be that way for all of them. Kingdom Hearts 3 is graphically demanding, but 1 and 2 were PlayStation 2 games, so you would imagine that it is possible to put these natively onto the Switch. You'd think so, but who knows? <laughs> Apparently not. Apparently not. So is this all just a cash grab? We know that it obviously costs a lot of money to publish a video game, even if it is just digital only. In fact, digital only sales only make developers a couple of extra dollars. So our question is, how much cheaper is it for Square Enix to just chuck these games on a server that they can shut down whenever they feel like it and still charge full price for it? So where does that leave us in Australia and all of the other regions that can't cloud game? We've seen in the case of Xbox and G4 servers that cloud gaming is possible here, but do we want it? No. At the start of this video I did, but now I'm not sure. Yeah, I think we've just convinced ourselves that cloud gaming is not a good idea. You should do what we're probably going to do and just go out and buy these games on the PlayStation. They'll run better even if you are in the States. But let us know what you think. We would honestly love to hear from you. Is cloud gaming the way of the future? Or are you like us and prefer to collect physical medias? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe while you're down there. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are the best for listening to us just ramble on and complain about cloud gaming for however long this has been now. Thank you again. And we'll see you next time.